hard to find anything in my drawers. <laughs> and believe me, I look over and over again. Oh well, whoever thought drawers up should have thought a little harder, don't you think? Uh, because they're just not working for me. This is a special day in my life because I've decided to build something with my eyes closed. Well, not build it, but actually design it. Because sometimes you know how when you close your eyes and you draw a little picture, it's better than you would have drawn it if you had your eyes open? Well, that's a big mystical thing in life. And so today, I'm going to put it to the test. Because look, I made this with my eyes open. <laughs> and I probably should have had them closed, really, because it's a bit wacky. But it's a child's bench, you know? And it's impermeably upholstered. Nothing's ever going to stain that upholstery. You know why? Because it's just glue and cloth. And it, it's hard. It, it dries kind of hard and, and impenetrable. So you could have any number of you know, stains, and you'd never notice. So it's a sort of a Dr. Zeus-like chair, or Dr. Zeus, if that's the mood you're in. And it's got kind of wacky lines on it and everything. And look, even the back is done. See the back? See, so you can leave it as a freestanding monument to your wild whimsy out in the middle of a room. So this is 3 quarters of an inch birch plywood that I'm using. And you can look, there's so many drawing implements in the world. These are flexible curves, which is great if you can eyeball something that, that, that you then want to use. And um, these are French curves, which are used for, they just provide lo lots of different curvy surfaces. So you can use those to put together a bunch of curves. So that's a possibility. But why bother with that if you can just close your eyes and, and just come up with a shape? It, it doesn't matter. The size of this can be anything. I mean, it's based on a deacon's bench, you know, the, the benches at the front of the church that are all kind of straight up and down that, that you sit like this in, or the deacon does, because the deacon is usually maybe w wants to fall asleep, and I think that's why they built those things so straight up and down. But anyway, um, the height that I'm going to make the sides is about, um, oh, 27 inches or so. Um, you know, roughly 30 inches to fit a kid, I guess. I, I don't really know because I don't have children. I'm just making this up as I go. But let's say 27 inches. OK. And then, then you just close your eyes and you think special thoughts. And then a line comes out of your mind and you put it on the plywood. So let's say I want to go to about here with my little thing. So I just go, OK, put my pencil there. That could be good. OK, see, look, it's going to be good. And so we know the seat's going to be somewhere around here for the little people to sit on, maybe about 12 inches or so. I don't know, 12 inches might be about a little bit, sort of mid-thigh on a short person. So that's where the seat will be. So I'm, I'm going to cut this out. OK, wait, I still have to make the legs. Possibly butt ugly, but we'll see. We'll cut them out. I'm going to cut this one out. Now, you've got to have a jigsaw in your life if you're a modern girl. This is the, sort of the purse model. There's a, another model that has a big, long cord on it that isn't quite so portable. But this, this packs with you anywhere. Whenever you need a jigsaw, you just have it right there. I'm not even going near the drawers. No, I'm not. So I'll just put on my headgear. This is. Um, these are actually used in rifle ranges. They're great. They really block the sound. And you've got to have these because when you activate this thing, the, the, see how the blade pulls up? And it shoots sawdust everywhere. So it's good to have the eye protection. And most good jigsaws are variable speed. I think they probably all are. Listen. Slow, like a sewing machine. or which is the speed I usually run my sewing machine at, especially when I was learning how to use it in home ec, which is why things turned out so badly. So all I do is I don't even need to clamp the board because it's really heavy at this point. So I'm going to start right here. Actually, I probably will clamp it because it wants to rock on that middle section. Always clamp as often as you can because it's, you know, just safe and, and satisfying too. 
Now, don't close your eyes at this point. Oh. Okay, and. I kind of missed the line. Okay, now there's no way I could be cutting this tight of a corner unless I had a scrolling blade in. It's a very thin little blade. So make sure you ask for a scrolling blade. And these jigsaws will cut metal and all kinds of things. You just have to get the correct blade for them. Okay. So, all right, so this is my Cut out with my eyes closed. Well, drawn with my eyes closed. I did have them open while I cut it out. All right, so it's kind of cute. It's kind of, kind of a little perky, like a little sort of a bum thing happening there. And it's, it's almost humanoid, really. It looks lively, though. And you never would have achieved quite that look with your eyes open, I'm thinking. Also, the, the jigsaw tends to leave little bings all over. And, but we don't care, right? Because we're covering it with cloth later. So that's good, because usually you spend a lot of time cleaning up those little dent, dents and dings. And then also plywood tends to have these little um, boo-boos in them, and um, th that's going to get covered too. Normally you would have to fill that with spackle. Okay, so now I'm going to flip this over like this and do a mirror image of it and just trace it and cut it out again. And I, you have to be quite sure that you're squaring it against the edge of the board so that the little thing doesn't rock later. So that feels good. And then look, you, you get a free bonus out of this because look, this could be the back of your bench. See, it even comes up very high like this, like a, a giant pompadour on a horse of a king. So you could have a very king-like bench for your child, especially if they're a bossy child. So I'll just trace this. I guess I'm not cutting quite yet. I'll just trace this with my pencil and cut it out again. And then I might just go ahead and, and use that back because it's all ready to go here, just the way it is. And then once that, once these, these parts are cut out, the assembly starts. And the assembly is just a little bit tricky because you have to, look, you have to put little braces under here to hold the weight of the child, um, especially if it's a portly child. So I'll just cut these pieces out and we'll go from there. Okay, well, I've got my two side pieces cut out, and they're, you know, they're a bit off. Look, I didn't cut them exactly the same because I kind of got revving on the old saw. That speed, that power, that motion, I'm just gunning it around those curves, and they get a little bit out of control. But that's okay because it's like when you're making a dress and the sleeves don't go on exactly quite right. They're not really equal. doesn't matter because your shoulders are this far apart. Nobody's ever going to know. You know, they're not going to be able to tell that the sleeves aren't right. And same here. This thing's going to be a little bit apart. Nobody's ever going to notice, okay? I just get through life that way, all right? I'm not even going to worry about that. And let me show you how this whole thing is laid out. See, I put a notch. See this notch? That's new. You know why? Because when I first did this, I just plunked the back on. And it, it just doesn't look tidy enough. It, it looks a bit funny that that this sticks out. I, I'd rather have it flush. So I just indented the side pieces so that the back will slip in there. Here's the back, which is left over from, remember? It's just the cutout. So it's going to tie in very well in a design way because there's it's an echoing pattern, you see. So this is how it sets up. This side goes over here, and this side goes over here, and you set how high you want the back. You kind of lay these on it. I did this before, actually, to determine where I wanted it to come out, and that's what I decided, because then I got this kind of repetitive, kind of archy thing happening there. It's a wing chair. It's a wing chair for a, a young person. All right, so point that you're at now is deciding how high up you want the seat to be. Remember I said about 12 inches? So I drew a line right across here at 12 inches. 
So I need to take these little strips of plywood that I cut and glue them on like this, and, and I'll add some screws too, because the seat is gonna sit on top of that. However, you just have to be a little bit careful with this because you can sort of get your um, lines mixed up. That is at 12 inches, so actually I have to put the seat in place so that I can place the strip. You know what I mean? Because otherwise the seat will end up a little too high. So that's where I'm gonna glue the strip. So I'll glue these on and screw them together, and then I have to do the same thing back here just to support the back of the seat, like I did here. Just this little piece, all right? And the, the side strips are covered with fabric, so they're a little bit hard to see, but they're there. So I'll get these babies glued on, and then the whole thing goes together and gets clamped and glued, and then we start with the fabric, which is really the fun part. Well, apart from jigsawing measuring and what's well, all good really okay my child's little wild bench is coming along here but I just want to give you a little screwing tip this is the last strip I'm putting on the back to hold the seat up this is how you build shelves, by the way. But listen, if you just scorp the glue down right like that, it's gonna slide around like a bar of soap. So the best thing you can do is smooth it out with a finger like this, and then that gives you more of a vacuum suction type of a gluing experience, which is always good. Okay, more like that. That's good. This is gonna be good, because look, first I gotta wipe off all the glue. My whole desk is just, it's just got big glue blobs all over it. Okay, so like this, and I've got that line there, so I'm tucking it right, well, I got two lines, but I know the one I want. And then I'm going to drive two screws into that very spot, and it's not gonna slip around. Because when you're screwing, you, you know, there, you don't want to have to concentrate too hard on the moving part. See how nicely that went? And if it weren't nice, I'd just be cranky. So, there. There, okay, so now the big moment comes, the assembly period. Okay, look, this goes like this, and now the magic of the seat comes into play, because look, how are you gonna clamp that? Good luck. How are you ever gonna even get into the back to screw these babies on? This is all solved by the seat, because it out drops in like this. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, all right. Well, the magic of the seat just turns out to be a little disappointing, but it will eventually, there, come into play. Okay, so everything's lined up. So now I have to glue here on both sides, the back of the seat, the edges of the seat, the top of the thing, and then pop it all together. <laughs> okay, so. This is, you do this for luck. Okay, so, top of here, top of here, top of here, back of here. No, no, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, it's always a little bit confusing when the gluing actually starts. Just get in there with your fingers because you know what we're making a child seat here. You have to have a little bit of the experience of childhood. And there's nothing like that moment in kindergarten when you first use the white glue and it dried on your hands and you start peeling it off and your whole palm comes right off on the glue. I love that. I still love that, okay? I will love that even at a great age and a venerable situation in life. Okay, so that's gonna go there. And I love this um, chair too because you know what? It doesn't really matter if you get glue on stuff because you're gonna cover it all up later. Okay, now the bench. Oh, you know what though? I forgot to get any clamps. See, this is why they say you should learn to play chess. <laughs> Whoa, because, okay, now I got on both hands. Because you would have some forethought. Oh, 
I don't have any. Okay, nice thing about plywood is that you don't normally have to pre-drill because the layers go, the grain goes this way, then this way, then this way. And so it's hard, it's flexible, you know, it's hard to split it. So I've got screws in all sorts of places just to stabilize everything so I can take the clamp off. The only thing is this design I'm discovering is a little bit top heavy. Well, let, let's take the clamp off so you can tell. So if, if you know, a, a child flounced down in a little moment of peak and might maybe go over backwards, so that's maybe not good if your child has dignity issues. You know, you might want to cut that down a little bit so there'd be no little mishaps or just put it against a wall. That would be good too. All right, so it's, it's really good. It's square, it's not tipping when you rock on it. So that's good, means it came out right. And now I have a big bowl of, it's a acrylic artist medium. It's what you mix with pigment to make paint, really. And you don't have to use this. You can use white glue, but you'll need to water it down a little bit. M white glue is a little bit more opaque than um, the way this turns out. So you get a whole bunch of swatches of material or just a whole bunch of material that, that you've collected over the years. Or some quilting shops actually supply all the swatches of all the fabrics that they have for mail order. Um, so you just get a box of them like this. And it's really cool because then they're sort of all pre-sorted into color groups for you. But you still have to kind of go through them and pick out all the reds and the oranges and stuff. And then you put them in little groups like this, and that way you have little bursts of color, little little schools, little little emotional blocks all over your little thing, which is good, I think. It's got more personality. And try doing some just with your eyes closed. So all you do is you um, smack some on anywhere, sort of, I guess I'll start with the back, and plop that on and then go over it. You know, it's classic decoupage. But it really looks great if you just keep blooming these colors. So it, it takes a while, it's a little time consuming, but it's worthwhile because the whole time you're doing it, you're thinking pleasant thoughts about maybe motherhood or, or aunthood if you're just an aunt. Okay. It's done, and it takes a while, I must say. And you'll have glue everywhere in the most inopportune places, including possibly your hair. This is a new styling aid, is, is you know, glue. Cool. So, but look how pretty it turned out. Isn't it nice? Look, sort of I got it. I was going to do a cat in a hat thing, sort of, but I, you know, that's really Dr. Zeus's character. So instead, I went for Cyclops at Sunset. It sort of works. And then look, every side is different. Isn't it pretty? And the back is actually almost the best part here. And it's all edged, which is kind of cool too, with um, one kind of color there. And then, oh, this is a fun project. And I think I'm going to title it Gloomy Like You Did Last Summer. Huh? Okay, so. Obviously, there's not much to this except a lot of time and a certain amount of heart. And um, I want you to look at some other chairs that people have made for kids. Over here on my right is Martin Black's rocker. Look how sweet. And normally his wife, Sharon, paints folk art on the rocker, so this still has to get finished. But I just love the structure of it. It's quite a lot more complicated than what we made, and it takes a lot of different ratios. And it took him a while to figure it out, but it's really beautiful. It's a real heritage piece. And then another heritage piece is just on the other side of that. That's Ross Bateman's um, kind of a monument to the terrible twos, really. It's, it's a potty. It's a child's throne for more of a purpose than this one has, all right? And it even has a magazine rack. That's cool. And, you know, because you don't want to be rushed at that moment. And, and you know, even with this, you could cut a hole in, the, in, the, in that one, too, if the child was at that age, that would be good. Just put a little, you know, little baggie under there, however they do that. Okay, so I, uh, I did a little one for the chipmunk, so I'm just gonna try to get him to come. Just put right beside the big one and then he'll come and see. Here, chip, 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 chip. Here, chip, chip, chip. 
You know, you can be as wild as you want building kids' furniture because kids are pretty hard to embarrass. For example, they fall over and it doesn't bother them. Well, that's the difference between kids and adults. When I fall over, I have to lie there for ages till I'm sure all the people who might have seen me fall have moved along. <laughs>